Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. J. And in this video, we will be diving into the exciting world of HTML components. Components are an essential tool for creating dynamic and interactive web pages that engage with the users. In this video, we will be showing you how to create your own components using HTML. And in the next video, we will take things even further by adding some JavaScript magic to make those components really come alive. So let's get started. Here's an example of where we create a label. Enter your name. This is a label. And we then create a text box or text field for that label. In order to do that using HTML, we have a label tag, that's the opening tag, and here is the closing tag for that label. And everything in between is what will appear on the label. So a label is used to request the user to perform a task. In this case, the message given to the user is to enter their name. Um, as part of the label, there's a for attribute that has the value of name. If we look at the second component, this is a text box component. You will see the type. The type here is text. Um, and this means that it's creating a text box for us. Something a little unusual here is it's self-closing. In other words, it does not have an open and a close like the label. Um, it has just the open and it's a self-closing uh, component. So the attributes here, type is text. ID, IDs must be unique for every component that you create. So ID is set to name. And you will see that the ID is set to the same property as the label. And by giving it the same property, if the user had to click on this label field, uh, focus will automatically then come into the label uh, into the text box or rather, and the user will be able to type immediately. These two label and the text box go together. There is a name attribute as well. And the name attribute is used to create a value pair that is sent to the server. And this allows the server to process the data that's entered by the user. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much about this particular attribute. Uh, in subsequent videos, we will possibly learn more about it. For our purposes at this stage, the ID attribute is important. They must be unique. And when we start writing our JavaScript, this is where we will refer uh, to this particular ID. Um, so as I've indicated, uh, here, the label and the input box is used when we require the user to type in information on our web page. Looking at the next component, this is a button component. Uh, and with the button component, it has an opening tag and it has a closing tag that's similar to the label. And the value in between is what will appear on the button. So change color is what uh, is, it's the description uh, of the button. If we look at the attributes, the type is a button uh, and the ID is my button. And again, the IDs remember we indicated must be unique. So these are the three main components that we are going to be focusing on. Buttons, 
we will be focusing on labels and we will be focusing on uh, text boxes. There are many other components like radio buttons and text boxes, etc. But for the purposes of these videos at this stage, I'm just focusing on these three components. Uh, the one final thing I'd like to uh, just to describe is the div tag. Um, the div is a non-visual element. And what it does is it creates an empty container on the web page. Uh, and once we've got this empty container, we can then set a value to the tag when we're coding in JavaScript. So uh, this is just something that we will be using uh, in our code now, but you will see what it actually does when we start writing the JavaScript. And you will notice that here we've got the opening tag and we have a closing tag and ID. Uh, it's given a unique name for uh, that particular div tag. So let's jump straight into CodePen and let's see how some of these components work. <clears throat> so here we are in CodePen, uh, and I'm now going to focus on the, my focus is on the HTML. So let's look at what we have here. Um, the first thing you can see is we have an H three heading tag uh, and it's being closed. So if you if you watch carefully where this is opened and where it is closed, which means that the button is contained within the H3 tag. Now, you know, what what purpose does that serve? If I remove the H3 and I close it at that point, you will now notice that once I close welcome to components, once I close it and then create the button, the button now appears on the next line. So to keep the button on the same, on the same line, I just kept the button inside of the H3 component. And here you can see the button is next to that um, welcome to components within that H3, H3 tag. Uh, if we look further into the button, you'll see that it's what I had described earlier. Uh, there's my button, the type is a button, and it's given an ID called my button. And this is what appears, this is what appears in the button, and there's a closing tag. That's your closing tag. So uh, this allows me to create a button. Now, a button is something that I can click, and when I click, then some event will trigger. Something will happen when I click the button. As it stands, nothing is happening, uh, and this is where the magic will happen in our next video. We'll start writing some JavaScript. So when I click on this button, as the name suggests, it will change the color of this H3 tag. But at this stage, we've just created the button, but there's no functionality behind the button. Looking at the next, um, looking at the next part, we have another H3 tag that says greeting example. Uh, there it is here, so that appears. And you would have noticed that for the H3 tag, I've got some CSS and that has changed it to the Arial font. Uh, there's a label, and the label says enter your name. So that's coming here where it says enter your name. And the, the type is text, so that gives us the text box that we have. And the ID is name. Remember, I indicated that when you keep the names the same, what happens is, when I click on the label, you will notice that automatically 
the text box uh, has focus and the user is able to type in some value. Uh, finally, I have another button and uh, here I've got button ID is, uh, it's a greeting button. It says greet me and that's your closing. And I think just to be consistent, you'll notice that here I don't have a type as I did in the first instance. Just to be consistent, we will say type equals button and type equals button. We'll close that. And the ID is equal to the greet button. So now we are consistent in the way we're creating the two buttons. Um, and finally, we've got the div tag. If you remember, the div tag was a placeholder. There's nothing visual that you can see through the div tag. We will use this div tag, which has an ID of greeting. When I click on this button, it will then say hello, and it will greet whoever whoever's name was typed in that text box. So the div tag will help us to output uh, that particular message. So again, if I click on the button, nothing is happening. There's no functionality. All that we were able to do so far in this video is show you how to create the buttons, the labels, and the text boxes. So we've been working with these components. We are close to a situation where we can create some interactivity with, the, with our web page. In the next video, we'll have the JavaScript, which will help us to uh, execute some triggers and to perform certain functions when these buttons are clicked. I hope you have a better understanding of how to create these different components. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we can add some functionality to these buttons. Till then, take care and bye.